I was talking to a colleague of mine that uh, was just telling about us uh, working on devising a methodology for mapping out literacy ideologies in scholarly articles, and I told him that my initial findings indicated that scholars often made uh, uh, implied or direct assumptions about what literacy was without drawing on literature in literacy research or defining clearly what they actually meant by literacy. And my friend pondered this for a moment, and he said to me, the thing about literacy is, is that it's really whatever anyone wants it to be. Here's where we come in today, and I'm showing you how we kind of begin to start to situate this in, the, in the, those theoretical frames. Um, G argues that multiple, uh, that multiple um, modes cannot be separated out in the manner that Kress suggests. Um, G states, okay. In such multimodal text, two modes communicates things that neither of the modes does separately. Thus, the idea of different sorts of multimodal literacy seems an important one. Both modes and multimodality go far beyond images and words to include sounds, music, movement, body bodily sensations, smells. We haven't quite worked that the smells in there yet, but that's coming. Okay, good. Uh, Let's play the game for 11 hours without taking a bath. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, you know, I mentioned about the text games earlier. There was one real text game earlier. It was called the, the Leather Goddess of Phobos. of literature and some are really snobby about it and some think that you know their best is better than you know there's just this 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 hierarchy of it. Well my thing is well then let's use some of that in this medium. You know what I mean? Put some filters on there and do it and you see it right now Orson Scott Card is the writer on that game um, not Avatar Advent or something. So there so actually you're starting to bring big writers now into this format. And one of the things that I was supposed to teach was Ender's Game. And so if you teach Ender's Game in your classes or if you've read Ender's Game yourself and, and really liked it, you could probably see how high school kids would really love that book. And so from there I kind of, like, I had, you know, add more things. And when we, you know, when I was in Dr. Black's Game's class and he introduced me to the software book, that's when all of this that they're talking about really got started. So first year just to kind of see what it was about. I don't I'm not really a gamer, so <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know I looked at it to see what it was. And I, I mean I think at the time it was because I was in, in the graduate program at ASU and there was just so much of my time, you know, was already taken. But you know, um, I can I, I listen to what the kids say and then you know they would be so excited just about the connection of something that they enjoyed reading so much that had this aspect of it. Talk to them. I had, you know, kind of like gave them little hints along the way, oh there's this game that goes along with it and it's free and, and as a couple of people had mentioned, I think Dr. Blasting had mentioned that some of the kids actually went ahead and started playing on their own. But I think that once that PJ talked to them about it, they were able to even get more things. He told them a lot of hints, and, and I'm sure that I know some of those kids are still playing, even though they one graduated. The, one of the kids created a board game. Uh -huh. He took me out to lunch with him, reading the book and playing the game. Yeah. So really, I think it, that idea of even kind of like laying out this, uh, you know, this hints along the way. Once you get done with this book, you're going to be able to try this game out. That kind of They don't have that, so they begin to write the stories themselves. If you're familiar at all with Twilight, but want to care a little bit, all become the teachers. As Pransky pointed out yesterday, we need to have partnerships with our students to engage them more. We need to learn from them, and we need to allow them to move forward and do a lot of learning while we guide them. So we created a wet paint wiki, and there's several different kinds of wikis that you can use. It's all free. So we created a closed system wet paint wiki that will later open and we invited any of the kids that we have into the foray. So some of them had already read the book, um, and as Christina pointed out, as a very eclectic sort of kid, a sort of group of kids, we invited all the freshmen and sophomore kids, because the book seems to be a, a little bit lower, but you know, I read them voraciously myself uh, several weeks ago now, and they're very good books. It kind of takes uh, Harry Potter and Star Wars and Ender's Game kind of throws it all together. Um, so it's very readable and the kids really...